So now we're going to move into what your book calls simplifying rewriting, rewriting formulas and equations. Um, and you know what it is. It's just uh, solving equations just like before in 1.3, only now there are other variables besides the one you want to solve for. Uh, so let's look at an example. Um, number 9. Number 9 says, to solve for y, given that 6x plus 5y equals uh, 31. And it, this example is fairly simple. I just want to get y by itself. We are going to wind up with an x over here, but that's fine. Okay. And, you know, it, let's run it parallel to another problem. Let's say this, all we do is take away the x. Say it's 6 plus 5y equals 31. Uh, y would just subtract 6. I know that. 5y equals 25. Okay, let's come over here. Subtract 6x, because we want to get 5y by itself. So 5y equals... Now when I subtract 6x from this side, I'm not going to combine it and make it 25 or something. They're not like terms. It's just going to be 30, 31 minus 6x. And I would divide by 5 here, and y would equal 5. Uh, over here, we do the same thing, only it's not 25, it doesn't look as nice, it's just this big thing here. And now here is why I, I wanted to use the scales uh, analogy. Right, when I drew out two different pans like this, and said we put stuff on each one of them because no matter what it looks like over here say this looks like this but this looks like a, you know a pile of sand or something maybe or it's gold dust or something i don't know okay now let's say over here there's let's divide this one into four pieces and here's an extra one sorry if this is small but just take my word that there are five little squares over here. And if I wanted to know what one of them was worth, well, then I need to make sure that I cut this down, you know, divide this by five, also divide this by five, the whole thing. All right. Um, let's say it looked a little bit different. That's too big. It's not a pile of sand or something. It is... Uh, you know, some marbles, and it's also some some other boxes. They're a little bit bigger. And there's five of those, and so on and so on and so on. There's a bunch of things over here, but where does it may look? This is equal to this, and if I divide this by five, I need to divide the whole side by five. Okay, what some people are tempted to do is, okay, I'm going to divide this by 5, and then I'll just divide this by 5, or this by 5. But the whole thing needs to get divided by 5. Okay, that's what we want to make sure we do. So y equals 31 minus 6x divided by 5. And it doesn't get any nicer looking than that. Alright, but the next part of the problem is it wants you to find out what is... Uh, what is y equal to if we let x be equal to negative 4? And all we have to do is put a negative 4 in here for x. Right? Let's take negative 4, put it in there for x, see what happens. If we put a negative 4 in there for x, negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 24. And positive 24 uh, plus 31 the negative 4 times the negative 6 is positive 24 over 5. y equals 31 plus 24 is going to be 55. Divide that by 5, and you have 11. All right. Now let's go to another example. Example from your homework problems. Uh, I'd like to do something like number 19. Number 19 has a, a picture of a shape. 
Uh, there's a formula for the surface area of this shape, I believe, yeah. The surface area of this cylinder that a ninja got a hold of. And the formula for that is pi times r, that'll be the radius of the base there, times h plus k, just in case you don't have your book yet, I'll draw you a little picture real quick of this ninja cylinder. Okay, we call it a truncated cylinder. Um, so this r is the radius, if you know how big the radius is. Uh, and then the, let's see, the height, I guess, or h is here. That's height, that's h. And then k would be how tall it is over here. Okay, so pi times r times h times, or times h plus k, add those two together. Okay, so pretty cool. We can find the the surface area that way. What they want us to do is to solve for the indicated value, which is in red, and that's h. So they say, tell me, you know, solve this in terms of h, which basically means once we're done, once we've solved for h, we can say, well, if you know uh, everything else besides h, you can find h. If you knew the surface area, and you knew the radius, and you knew k, you could find h. So let's solve for h. Um, uh, let's go with, we've got this guy multiplied. You know, both of these terms are multiplied by these parentheses. So let's divide on both sides by pi times r. Okay. And if that seems weird, if that seems different or new, <coughs> just think pi times r times this quantity h plus k. So here's a factor, here's a factor, here's a factor. This whole thing is a factor. So if I divide by pi, well, there's a common factor of pi, so that gets divided. A common factor of r, so that gets divided. You know, that gets canceled out. Uh, and we're good. Now we've, we've left with 1 up here in the numerator and denominator, and so that essentially leaves h plus k by itself. So s divided by pi times r equals h plus k. And we're looking for h. Subtract k from both sides. There you have it, h. And they say, uh, the next part, uh, they say r is equal to 2. They say k is equal to 3. They say s is equal to 50. Let's worry about the numbers right now, not the units too much. So h is equal to, we're going to put everything on this other side, s, okay, that's 50, over pi, that's a number, it's about 3.14, times r, r is 2, um, minus k, which is 3. So, there we go. I don't know. That's about as good as it gets. I guess we could, you know, th throw that into a calculator and find the approximate value. We'd find that h is about 4.96 centimeters. Uh, so that's an option that we could do. We could just throw that into a calculator and, and get about what we're left with. All right, that's 19. Um, okay, let's do like 23. And it says 3xy minus 28 equals 16x, and that's it. They want you to first solve for y, okay? A little bit of a trick, uh, but we can do it. So here's y. Let's get everything, I would say, if you want to think of it this way, everything that's multiplied with y, uh, get that by itself on one side, okay? So treat this like it was like 5 times y, just something times y. 
So the first thing we do is multiply, or not multiply, add 28 to both sides. So 28 plus 16x, right? Because if I add 28 to both sides, this will be a 28, positive 28. I'm adding it to a positive 16x. Uh, now, we want to get y by itself. So we've got just multiplication left. We can divide it by 3, and that'll cancel that. Divide by an x, that'll cancel this out. So divide the whole thing over here by 3x as well. y equals 28 plus 16x over 3x. OK. Uh, so let's see, is it 23? And now they're saying if x is equal to 4, then find out what y is equal to. So if I put a 4 in here for x, saying x equals 4. So <clears throat> 4 times 16 is 64 plus 28 over 3 times. Oh, this 4 also has to go in here. That's going to be 3 times 4. That's 12. And y is equal to this stuff. Uh, y equals what are we going to get here? It's going to be 92 over 12. Y equals 7 and 2 thirds. OK. Um, you know, we could take it piece by piece and say, well, these both have, you know, just take a stab in the dark. You could start with something easy like definitely 2 is going to go into 12 and 92. So this will be 6. This will be 46. Now we got 2 again. This will be 3. And this will be 23. Uh, so there we have 23 thirds. We could absolutely leave it just like that. Or we could make it into a, quote, proper fraction, uh, or a mixed fraction, and uh, do 7 and 2 thirds. I'd like to do one more, a little bit of a strange one, a little bit of a challenge, but it's a, it's a good challenge to take on. Let's say 29. Let's see, we've got x times y times z equals x plus y plus z. Okay. To start out with, let's just get all the z's on one side and everything else on the other side, okay? With the exception of this stuff here is going to kind of wind up hanging out and being together uh, for a while. So let's subtract z from both sides. xyz minus z equals x plus y. No problem there, just subtract a z from both sides. Now, what I want you to notice here is, you know, what do we do here? We've got a z here and a z here, and we, it's not exactly like combining like terms. We can't, <coughs> this isn't 2z and this is negative 3z, and we just put them together. It's just it's not like that, right? So what I want you to think about is kind of going in reverse, thinking that right here, we, let's say we wound up with x times y times z minus z. And let's say we wound up with it because we, we did something to get it. And here's what I'm saying. Um, let's say we had multiplied z by something to get x times y times z minus z. What would we have to multiply in here to get this? Well, because there's a subtraction, we should we should see that there's subtraction, right? And we we're gonna see that there's like distribution happening in here. So what would I have to multiply to get x, y, z? Well, what if I had an x and a y? If I multiplied z by x, y, z, I would have x times y times z. And what would be over here? It would be one. Z times negative one would be negative z. Uh, so we can see that we have z times this stuff would 
if I distributed it, would come out exactly like this. We learned about distribution, and now we're just kind of going backwards. We're undoing that distribution. Well, now we've got z times some stuff equals some other stuff. So if we wanted to isolate z, we could just divide by x times y minus 1. Divide by x times y minus 1. All right, so z equals x plus y over xy minus 1. Okay. So here's the the tricky part. Everything else pretty straightforward should be. But this part right here, well, we call factoring out a z. You can think of it as undistributing that z. Uh, and uh, that's that's it. That's the little trick that uh, you have to use in these problems in this section. Um, so think about those. Try some of those out, and uh, let me know if you need any help.